Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the GGB Supplier Showcase. As always, I'm your host, Jess Marquez, and I'm so pleased to be joined today by a familiar face, a friend of the program, Mr. David Bretnitz, VP of Sales for Canby. How are you doing today, sir? Ah, doing well. And, uh, happy to be back with you again. It's good to see you. Definitely, definitely. I think it was around uh, this time last year that we talked, uh, and it's typically around this time that I get to talk to everybody because this is our uh, our busy period as we obviously head into G2E season. So that's kind of what I wanted to start with today, kind of kick it off. Um, you know, every company obviously uh, kind of, it's interesting to hear the various people like where different companies are in their stage of, you know, development, whether uh, at sometimes, you know, G2E is kind of like a huge launching point for them. Other times it's a little bit more scaled back, laid back, um, just depending on timing, you know, how things work out. Um, so kind of what is your guys's kind of uh, framework going into the show? What are your expectations and just your general kind of uh, goals for it? Well, obviously busy time of the year, I think probably for, for many in the industry and uh, it's no different for Canby as we look forward to G2E. But I think that also means, you know, Ahead of that, we have the, you know, kickoff of the of the football season. Obviously, NFL went last night, um, you know, college football last weekend and even the weekend before. And so it's a exciting time for us. But that also means that we're, you know, rounding the corner here, uh, heading into G2E. And so uh, we'll be at our same booth uh, as last year, uh, 2230. And uh, we're excited. We're excited to go and meet. Uh, Obviously, our existing partners that we currently have, you know, reconnecting with them and, and supporting them with anything that they uh, they need going forward. But then even more so prospects, um, you know, obviously G2E is the best platform you could possibly have, uh, you know, to go and meet, you know, new prospects that are interested in our uh, in our products and our services. But I think even this year, there's a little bit more uh, excitement there as, as Canby's really pushed to modularize our service. Uh, it gives us an opportunity to get out there and talk to uh to, to new operators, ones that, you know, maybe in the past we didn't really have an opportunity to partner with. So that, uh, that addressable market for Canby uh, is certainly expanding. Uh, obviously, our, our product portfolio and our, our portfolio of companies uh, has expanded as well. And so uh, it's exciting for us to be able to get out there and, uh, and share that at G2E. Definitely. And, you know, you mentioned kind of the uh, the the added layer of excitement. And, and I, did, I failed to mention this in the intro, but um, for all bookmakers out there, this has kind of been, uh, you know, uh, or anybody related to the sports betting space. It's been a, a great year in terms of, you know, obviously we went right from the end of NFL season in the uh, in the winter and we went right in through our typical, um, you know, uh, basketball and, and hockey season in the spring. And then we also had, you know, some really big soccer tournaments and the summer games uh, this summer. So this is one of the few years where we had pretty much a continuous sports calendar uh, all the way up until this point of the year, which is pretty rare. Um, yeah. So if we look ahead uh, this year, obviously, you got, you mentioned products and uh, partner companies. Could you go into a little bit more detail there and kind of uh, overview um, what you guys will be showcasing and who you will be showcasing with uh, this upcoming October? Yeah, definitely. So we'll have our full uh, portfolio of companies there uh, from Shape Games on the UI and uh, UX side of things. Uh, we'll also have Tezzerac there, which is our new AI trading arm uh, and manage trading on that end of it. Uh, and then we'll also have Abios there uh, from the esports side of it. So just continuing to grow those brands. Um, and then I think even more so, I think it's the the products that we're that we're bringing forward. And so one of the key things for us this year, especially with modularization of our service, is being able to offer our odds feed. Uh, you know, giving you know Canby's full library of high quality odds. Uh, delivered via an API. So I mentioned before, it opens up our addressable market. So some operators that, you know, they don't need the full Canby turnkey. They don't need, um, you know, all the different operational, you know, support and services that come along with that. And they can provide their own, their own services there. Uh, this allows us to kind of feed into some of those companies, allows us to expand that addressable market, uh, allows us also to, you know, form new partnerships, which is, uh, which is exciting for us. I think when you look beyond that, you know, on the Tezzerac side of it with the managed trading, um, you know, really being able to create that limitless uh, sports book that I think everybody looks to have, you know, players want to play when it's exciting for them, um, when it's, you know, engaging for them. And so more or less on demand. And if we can have that limitless offering that has no boundaries per se, I think that just makes for an even more compelling and engaging product 
um, which hopefully for our operators, it creates that long-term retention uh, and even more so probably the acquisition on the front end of that, that they have something that they're, they're interested in. Um, you know, beyond that, some of the key things that we're still continuing to push out there and, you know, Canby has one of the best bet builders, if not the best bet builder uh, in the industry, you know, allowing our partners to have access to that, being able to build upon that, you know, we talk about NFL and obviously same game parlays are huge there. The overall bet builder, the combinability, uh, we just mentioned engagement again, but just, you know, what players can do, it makes that sports book, you know, more open and accessible uh, for some players that might not be as well versed or uh, as educated when it comes to sports betting to have, you know, the combinability options to where they can wager that much smaller stake for a much higher payout. Uh, being able to give our operators uh, and even ones that um, might already have a sports book, but need to, you know, really develop and, and grow, uh, you know, what their offering is uh, currently, you know, they can, you know, take some of those, you know, key services that can be has that we've held so close to us for a long time, uh, but that we're now pushing out to the, to the market in a more modular way. Certainly. And, you know, one thing you mentioned the odds feed, you also kind of mentioned the, the, the turnkey product, um, could you kind of go into more detail about that and kind of why, you know, why is it still uh, a feasible and attractive product in today's market? Yeah. So turnkey, I think, is always going to be our bread and butter. That's what the, you know, Canby company was built on. Um, but I think really where that we still see that being the future is the fact that we're able to make it a lot more flexible now. You know, so if you want to take on a little bit more on the trading side, you know, on the back end, you can do that. Um, but I also think, too. I think companies and operators have realized that their focus might be on marketing. They might be better there. They might be more uh, experienced on that side of it. Cami's invested a lot of years, a lot of money and resources into making sure uh, our product is, is cutting edge and our services are too. And so having everything built in house, I think those operators recognize the fact that they can utilize Cami uh, to do some of those things that cost a lot of money uh, as well as resources to, to obviously build, but even more so maintain. And so I think even as we look forward uh, to the tribal side of things, you know, turnkey is still huge there. You know, it's more about, you know, less risk, you know, versus more reward and just kind of balancing it, having those offerings that, uh, you know, players want to come and play with, but that also doesn't open them open them up and, and make them more susceptible uh, to really high risk levels. And so I think they looked to us to be able to provide that turnkey service to them. But we've even seen it across the Latin AM market. You know, there's a lot of the newer jurisdictions that are regulating to where uh, the product is subpar. But a lot of those companies have a lot of experience when it comes to operating a sports book. But they also recognize, like I said, uh, you know, Cambie's experience in that, uh, having the best risk management, the sharpest risk, uh, being able to bring forth that long tail, you know, trading offering uh, based off of all the resources that we have available to us. And really the, the power of the network and what you get with that. We sit on so much bet data uh, and player data across the world, uh, being able to factor that in and spread that across the entire Canby network. Um, you know, you really are greater than the sum of its parts, you know, when it comes to Canby. And so I think our partners uh, appreciate that. Our prospects notice that as well. And so I think that's where we really see turnkey uh, still, you know, having a very big place, um, you know, within our business. Sure. And I think one of the things that is really interesting to me about not just Canby, but anybody in the sports betting space at this point in time in particular is like, I my feeling is that of all the gaming verticals or at least the ones that I am intimate with and work with in, um, I think sports betting is probably the most, I would say, innovative and creative right now, basically out of necessity, obviously, as we've seen how quickly and how, um, you know, far it's expanded in such a short period of time. And I think people are running up against having to really uh, differentiate themselves in the market to really stay alive and keep pace. And, uh, you know, companies such as your guys is that has such a, a long track record of experience, not just in the U.S., but all around the world, um, I think is a huge advantage. So I think what do you think is kind of the like uh, I would say like the opportunities or and challenges of of being in an environment like this that is so competitive that is so uh, innovative? Obviously, the technology um, it feels like there are new kind of trends or micro trends, whether it be uh, same game parlays as you mentioned, micro betting is a huge uh, thing right now. So I guess kind of what do you think is kind of the, uh, the opportunity and challenge of of a market like this where it's kind of so it's it's just so cutthroat. 
See, I, I think the competitiveness actually bodes well uh, for Canby, and that comes down to our experience. And then even more so the fact that all that we do from the technology side of it to the services that we provide, um, everything is built and developed in-house. Everything is managed in-house. And so we're not relying on third parties. So if there is new technology that an operator does want to incorporate, if they're taking our turnkey or any of our other services, and they want to build on top of you know what we already offer we have the resources to help them do that um you know we also have the ability to go out there um and guide them as they look at at new opportunities and i think we see new ideas every other day is every new idea a good idea no is all innovation good innovation and eh, not necessarily i think it tests you to continue to get better uh but at the same time we also want to guide our operators uh, in a way that they're not wasting their money. Uh, you mentioned it being cutthroat. Uh, and so if you're, you know, bleeding resources on something that might not generate meaningful revenue in the future, that doesn't really benefit any of us from the you know, Cami side of it down to our operators. And so I think really our experience, the fact that you can build on top of the Cami Sportsbook, the flexibility that we add on the turnkey side of things as well, uh, really gives operators the confidence one, that they can differentiate themselves. And I think, two, they can have success and they can leave some of the, the heavier lifting to Canby and they can focus on some of those other initiatives. Definitely. And I think the the phrase, you know, the phrase you use doing the heavy lifting is really apt for uh, this period of time where it's it's interesting to me because I think we are now reaching the point where, uh, be it like investor pressure or something, things along those lines, I think a lot of these bigger operators and companies are kind of realizing that, it may not be the best solution for them to do everything themselves or to invest X amount of millions of dollars into a platform, uh, you know, a proprietary platform. Uh, and rather, it might just be better off after all, um, you know, going with a trusted uh, supplier such as yourselves. I think that's definitely we're starting to see that kind of revert back to uh, the mean a little bit, especially as kind of the some of these peripheral players kind of get weeded out a little bit. Um Thank you so much for joining me again. I just have one more for you, and it's kind of forward-looking. So obviously, uh, this is definitely going to be a big show for you guys, a big end of the year. And then into next year, as we get into ICE uh, in January, um, where would you say is kind of the, or I guess what would you say is kind of the main um, growth uh, objective for you guys at this stage in time. You mentioned how tribe the tribal sector in the U.S. is is huge. Obviously, Latin America with the Brazil market coming online is a huge opportunity. That's still a little bit uncertain. Obviously, there's still some things to be worked out there, but we're you know everyone is confident that it will eventually be a very big opportunity. So, um, what would you say? What would you say is kind of uh, some of your guys' main points uh, moving forward as you kind of uh, look to grow beyond this year? Yes, yeah, so I think there's a lot of opportunity out there for us. I don't know if we can really narrow it down just to one spot, but uh, maybe we'll give you the quick summary. I think from the tribal side of it, uh, obviously there's some there's some interesting prospects there uh, for new state regulations. Obviously, some of those aren't going to happen for a few years. Um, but I think beyond that, we also see on the tribal side of it uh, that you know playing field has kind of been leveled. Uh, in a way, um, to where tribes are able to kind of retain more of their sovereignty at this point. Uh, and I think that's important. And for Cami being a B2B supply, uh, supplier uh, of our services, you know, that bodes well for us as well. And we can support those tribes in a way that's that, you know, best suits them. Uh, across LATAM, obviously, yes, you're talking about Brazil. Brazil's a, a huge target, complicated market, you know, trying to, and I think everybody's still trying to get through the regulatory side of things there. But uh, even beyond that, there's other other interesting markets across the, you know, the LATAM region. And I think there's probably more opportunity there than there is in the U.S., uh, at least in the next probably year or two. Um, and so, yeah, we have a big focus there. Canby being a scalable company um, and having a, a localized offering for each territory that we operate within, uh, that bodes well for us. So that's important. And then I think beyond that, you know, a lot of these operators that are established already, where I mentioned before about kind of expanding our addressable market, being able to approach some of these different operators with a, you know, odds feed opportunity with our, you know, Tesseract, you know, AI trading arm. Uh, and then going out there and even from the shape side of things, helping people build out their front ends and develop them in a more meaningful way uh, to help kind of control that user journey and make it more beneficial um, are big are big targets for us. And so we're uh, we're looking forward to that, obviously supporting our tribal partners, further expansion across LATAM and then, you know, seeing where we can partner with some of these existing operators uh, going forward.
Sure, sure. Well, David, this has been a great, again, thank you so much for joining me. Canby has long been some of our uh, biggest supporters, and we've been uh, likewise biggest supporter of you guys. Um, there is no shortage of news developments and action on the sports betting side, and I'm sure that Canby will be heavily involved in all of that moving forward. I can't wait to see where you guys go from here. Uh, David, thanks again for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Appreciate the opportunity. Thank you for joining us for the GGB Gaming Supplier Showcase, our exclusive look at the best products and services produced by vendors for the gaming, iGaming, and sports betting industries. For more information about the GGB Supplier Showcase, contact Terry Brady at tbrady at ggbmagazine.com.